Hi, my name is Donna Edwards and welcome to Addiction Counselor CEU. Today we're going to be discussing group development and group stages. With group development, there are things to consider. Some of the things to consider are clarity of purpose, relevance of purpose for the members, size of the group, length of each session, frequency of meetings, adequacy of the settings, time of day for both the leader and the members, closed or open group, voluntary or non-voluntary membership. Clarity of purpose. The single most important consideration when developing a group is clarity of purpose. The leader and the members must clearly understand the purpose of the group. Revelance of purpose. Not only should the members and leaders be clear regarding the purpose, but also the purpose must be relevant for the members. An example, for those on the verge of dropping out of school, it would not be relevant to discuss how to study for math and history tests. A better topic would be attitude about school and their plans should they drop out of school. Group size. The size of the group will depend on parts of its purpose, the length of the time of the session, the setting available and the experience of the leader. Five to eight as the ideal number of, of members for most groups. For groups with members from very diverse cultural backgrounds, the leader and members may be more comfortable with groups of no more than five. So length of each session. For members to feel invested in the group and in one another, enough time must be allotted for each session. If a group session is not long enough, members may feel they did not get their chance to share. With the frequency of the meetings, the number of meetings per month depends on many different factors. The most important being the purpose of the group and the composition of the members. The key to frequency of meetings is that they not be so, so frequent that they become boring and not infrequent that each meeting is like a first session. The adequacy of the setting. There are a number of things to consider when regarding where the group meets. Convenience, privacy, comfortability of space. Time of day. When setting up a group, the leader should choose a time that seems best for the majority of those involved. An example is if the group meets right after lunch or late in the day, the leader and the members may be tired. Closed groups. Members are consistent. Once group members are enrolled, no new members are allowed. Open groups are members can come and go as they please. Eligibility less of an issue.
Voluntary, members choose to be a part of the group. Non-voluntary is when members are required to be a part of the group, which could be court mandated. Group Stages Group Stages Forming Storming Norming Performing Adjourning The group meets and learns about the opportunities and challenges, and then agrees on goals and begins to tackle the tasks. That is forming. Storming is when the group starts to sort itself out and gain each other's trust. Conflict may arise between team members as a power and status are worked out. Norming is when team members take the responsibility and have the ambition to work for the success of the team's goals. Members accept others as they are and make an effort to move on. Team members are now competent, autonomous, and able to handle the group process without much supervision. Group norms and roles have been established. Group members now focus on achieving common goals, often reaching an unexpectedly level of success. That is performing. Adjourning, which is members have completing the goals of the group, the group termination.